Rock and Sand Apologetics welcomes you to another Lord of the Rings Bible study. Today's study, Aragorn, the exiled, the stranger, the king. Say friend and enter. Aragorn threw back his cloak. The elven sheath glittered as he grasped it and the bright blade of Andril shone like a flame as he swept it out. Elendil, he cried, I am Aragorn, son of Arathorn, and am called Elisar, the Elfstone, Dunedain, the heir of Isildur, Elendil's son, of Gondor. Here is the sword that was broken and is reforged again. Will you aid me or thwart me? Choose swiftly. Aragorn, son of Arathorn, Isildur's heir, goes into self-exile to help the Gondor. Gondor itself, however, is being kept by the stewards of Gondor, awaiting the prophesied return of their king. When we first meet Aragorn, he is not Aragorn, but Strider. The innkeeper at the Prancing Pony is Butter, Mr. Butterbur and Bree. He describes Strider as dangerous. Strider, for all his talents as guide, scout, and natural leader, would rather follow than lead. He fears one would assume the blood of Isildur, which runs through his veins, for it was through Isildur's pride that the Ring of Power was not destroyed when it had the chance. Aragorn fears making the wrong decisions, yet at the same time he is willing to fight to death to, to protect those under his charge. When the sword that was broken, Narsil, is remade, Aragorn receives the quest of the ring, one that is to lead him to his own destiny, the true, true king of Gondor. In many ways, it reminds me of David or Jonathan in the Bible. They were both royal in God's eyes, yet the humble in their own. Jonathan, son of King Saul, was more righteous than his father. Yet his, because of his father's sins, the throne was take, given over to David. David was a shepherd, not a king. And it took him a while to get used to the idea, just like Aragorn. God chooses us according to his desires and his needs, then equips us with the symbol that we might need. In Aragorn's case, it is the remade sword that Aragorn needed to... Uh, but direct his path through the uh, paths of the dead, clearly a type of death and a resurrection. The sword, of course, to the Christian, is the word of God. It is not our weapon against the enemy, but the symbol of our right to claim in Christ as heirs in him and in his kingship. Once Aragorn passes through the paths of the dead, he arrives at Gondor at a time in which they are in great need. So shall the ret return of our Lord and King also be. The world shall be in such turmoil that we won't be able to believe the valiant among us can take another onslaught. Then just as we've decided that our only course is to die gloriously in, upon the uh, battlefields of faith, 
our Lord shall descend. He has already passed through the paths of the dead, and there he has set the captives free. Jesus came in humility, yet not denying his true divinity. Yet he, his following was great in power, if not in number. The fellowship of the twelve, like the fellowship of the nine, changes the world. By the power of God, we can change the world, just as the fellowship changed the course of Middle Earth, or the Twelve changed our world. Then the Lord will appear over them, and his arrow will go out like lightning. The Lord God will sound his trumpet, and will march forth like the sound of wind of a southern heaven. The Lord of hosts will protect them, they will devour up and subdue them and stone with stone slingers and they will drink and make noise with wine they will be filled with blood as a bowl saturated like the corners of the altar the lord their god will deliver them that day like the flock of his people for like jewels embedded in a crown, they will shine in his land. For how great is the, his goodness, and how great is his beauty. There will be grain for the young men, and new wine to prosper the young woman. Zechariah 9, 14-17 